Hello! Welcome to Red Out. Red Out is a racing game, you can tell because it says race right there. But anyway, for those of you who don't know, uh, this is a racing game s sort of in the vein of, of things like um, uh, F Zero, Wipeout, stuff like that. So they're somewhat combat oriented racing games, but it is primarily a pure racing style game. Um, this particular one is a, it's a new, it's a little different, so the, the, the physics when you first play it's going to be a little bit weird, but I've gotten used to it and it sort of makes sense. Uh, apparently, I should mention, it just came out, it's um, $35 I believe on Steam. Uh, and the developers have said, it also has VR support if you're interested, the developers have said um, that there is, that they modeled the physics on uh, actual magnet behavior and quadrocopters or quad rotors or whatever you want to call them. Little tiny flying helicopter things. And everyone has apologies for the voice, I apparently am dying at the moment. That'll sort itself out soon. But anyway, it's a little weird at first, you get used to it, but because this is a racing game, when I actually get to the gameplay itself, I'm going to do a full race and it's going to be relatively quiet on the commentary part because I can't race and talk. But anyway, there's a bunch of modes. There's time attack, there's speed, which is time attack, but with speed, uh, you get uh, subtracted seconds for being above a certain speed, etc. Survival is weird. Uh, I'm not so, I'm not sold on survival very much. I feel it's a little little weird. Uh, probably good for reaction timing and learning tracks and stuff like that because it does force you to pay quite a bit of attention. Uh, Instagib also forces you to pay quite a bit of attention. It is time attack with no respawns and increased damage from running into the track itself. Race, standard race, pure race is race with no power-ups. Arena race is race with no respawn. Last man standing is your standard, typical last man standing, where the last, the person in the last place gets removed from the match or removed from the race. Um, I prefer last man standing on a time system, so like every you know 15 seconds it removes whoever's in last. Um, but this operates on laps, so whoever's in last when the lap ends is removed. Score uh, is just you know. You get points, fast laps, not hitting things, uh, being ahead of people, you get points, highest points wins. And boss is actually kind of neat. So normally boss is, you know, it's a, it's a particularly difficult enemy, you figure that out. This is uh, the entire region, which is all five tracks. Every region has five tracks, I'll show them in a moment. Uh, the entire region in one event, in one race, so it's pretty cool. We're just going to do a quick uh, time attack here, three laps, doesn't matter. You can go up to eight laps and eleven, no no, sorry, that's race goes up to eight laps apparently. Yeah, and opponents goes up to eleven. Uh, I don't think the opponents ever goes higher than eleven, and you can have laps on this by the way, and it's comical. Um, that only goes to seven, so it's different per thing apparently, but either way we're going to do time attack, just so I can show you some stuff. Uh, you unlock these by doing the campaign, which I will show you shortly. Uh, so I can't do Volcano at all, but I do have some Abuza levels. So you can see there's five per, and they are quite different. You can see a little bit of a preview of each track in each region. And they are, each region is quite varied. This one obviously being Cairo is very desert based. That one's snowy, this one's jungly, and this one of course is a volcano. So that's a thing. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into, because I don't think I can do, no, I can't do revolving. So we'll do uh, Kalima, because it's got this loop in it. And you have four different classes from a numerous different teams, is what the game calls them, I believe. Uh, so this team is ESA, AGR, whatever that means. I don't know the, the background lore on any of this crap, but basically you start off the game with class one. You get one for free, so you can pick uh, from any of these different ones. They all have different stats. You can see those in the bottom right there. So this one is your all-around vehicle, high grip, high structure, high acceleration, speed. This one has high speed and structure, etc. So this is your energy uh, vehicle. 
energy is used for uh, weapons and boosts and stuff like that and repairing um, etc so and as you go up the classes you can see that they get crazy fast like if we look at class 2 that's where they start differing quite wildly so you can see the max speed on this one maxes out at class 2 so they go crazy fast but they have no grip and they're made of tissue paper same with this one here uh, they start to even out a little bit at class 3 and class 4 goes real fast and I haven't been there yet uh, and I also don't own any class 4 ships but we're gonna take the Hussar here and you have power-ups that you can pick I don't own all of these but there they are uh, you can obviously pick none if you feel like it for whatever reason EMP blast uh, scrambles the screen freezes the thing and you get a boost energy drain drains energy this is a shield uh, this turns on and greatly increases your grip, so it's very good going around a lot of corners. You can maintain quite a bit of speed uh, pretty easily. Repair drone, repairs, turbo boost is what I use because it makes me go fast. And on this side, these are all your passives. You've got stuff like uh, higher energy recharge, higher speed, um, faster respawns, more hole. And then this one is interesting, but relatively limited use to be honest, but this gives you a very noticeable max speed and energy charge, uh, energy recharge increase when you're trailing someone. I use the magnetic stabilizer because grip. Uh, I don't actually want that. I want the boost in the grip. There we go. And this shows your current track and game mode and stuff. We're going to go ahead and jump in so I can show you what's going on when you actually get in the game. The load times, uh, they're relatively long, which, you know, it's can be sort of irritating to some degree, but they're not super crazy long. The longest is obviously the boss ones, but that's because it's loading five different tracks simultaneously. So here's our little vessel here. This really nice touches on the um, air brakes and stuff like that to allow you to turn. So just like... Uh, F0 and stuff like that, you have strafe, which will assist you going into corners. You have your standard turn. You got your go, you got your stop, which also functions as reverse somewhat annoyingly. And for some reason, you have brake lights on these vehicles. I don't know why. But you also have something that the others generally don't, which is this. You can pitch forward and you can pitch back. And if you pitch forward, for some reason, it makes me go much to the left probably because the sloping on the track but either way and what that is is some of you could probably figure out what's going on with this based on the name of the game which is red out you can black out and red out if you go uh, into up or down kind of you know slopes a little too fast and I'm trying to find one that's a reasonable this is the first track you, well, I think it's the first track you get, I'm not sure. So it's a relatively simple track, but there should be a loop over here. And you can see we black out and red out there. And if I were to go over that using the uh, pitch of the craft, either up or down, I can negate some of that. So if I go boost into this, you'll notice I actually slam into the ground. Uh, I'm trying to turn around here, there we go. It'll probably shout at me in a second here. You actually slam into the ground uh, if you go really fast into slopes like this. And that'll hurt you and slow you down, which is obviously not good. But you can control the pitch of your craft. Let's get up to speed again. And if I control the pitch of the craft, I can go around that without hitting the bottom of the track, which is a very vital part of the game. You'll be... You'll be strafing left and right into corners, you'll be uh, leaning forward or back based on, you know, what's going on on the track, and a lot of the time you'll be doing all of this at the same time. So if we back out of that track, uh, cancel that, and go to a more difficult track, like, uh, unfortunately, one I don't have. I was going to show you uh, revolving, because it's ridiculous, but we'll show... Uh, we'll do Explorer, just, I don't quite remember all of the tracks, but I think Explorer is a reasonable one. So we'll load this one up and just have a go at it. So here's the track, it does a quick flyover and then it'll fade to black. 
Oh, this is the one with all the jumps on it, I think. Three, two, we'll see. One, and then I will uh, become quiet and do, we'll do a uh, an actual... We'll probably do a, uh, a boss... Um, the Alaska boss track in the campaign, just so you can see it. But you can see, you know, just looking at this track, I'm not boosting or anything. Just looking at this track, that you're going to be doing a lot of a lot of pitch management and a lot of uh, strafing and stuff like that. You can see it scrape the ground there, etc., etc. Go over that, you got to manage pitch, you got to do all these sharp corners, and during all of this, you're going to be having to manage your, uh, your energy gauge over there, boosting, etc., etc. It's got all these jumps on this track. My uh, ability that I use, which you'll see me using quite a bit if I'm not an idiot, which sometimes I am, uh, is activated via, I'm using the controller, the X button on my Xbox 360 controller, which is a boost, which burns all of my energy and makes me go real fast. Now if you die, assuming there are respawns, um, whenever we get to a jump here, somehow I'm doing better than last time. Well, I shouldn't, you know, I'm not exactly doing good at all, but... So if you die, let's just, you know, jump off the track over here into that wall of doom. There's a wall on the side and a wall on the uh, right as well. It will respawn you back on the track. It takes some time. You can have that passive upgrade that makes it faster, etc., etc. But this is basically read out. It's very, very fun, in my opinion. It also has online, if that interests you. But uh, it's quite fun, and there's a ton of campaign events. Bearing in mind that these are only rank 1 and 2, these don't have a rank 3 uh, ship yet. So, And these are just the ones I've unlocked as well. So we're going to do the Alaska SS SRRL challenge, which is boss. It's two laps, for better or worse. Uh, I should also mention, somewhere in here, there it is. You can get platinum. Uh, it does not show you the time or requirement for platinum, but there is a platinum medal that you can get, as you can see in the uh, underneath the sands over there in the left. That little icon is the platinum medal. There's silver, there's gold, I'm pretty sure bronze is somewhere in here, but I don't get too many bronze, thankfully. But there is a platinum medal that you can get, so it's a thing. But anyway, this is uh, right out. I'm going to do Alaska SRRL challenge and you can, you know, see what it's like. Uh, there's a lot of left and right stick action going on in this game and I'm not particularly good at it. I more or less just started, so bear that in mind. Uh, and let's uh, go ahead and get started here. I've got turbo boost, I got magnetic stabilizer, I got my Hussar. Let's see how it goes. And this load screen will be a bit longer because it is the boss level. Although I haven't exited out of the game, so it might still have some of the assets loaded. Apparently it did. So that's the thing. Three, but anyway, let's get two, started. One, go. I don't know if there's a boost at the start. I haven't bothered to try. Just so everyone's aware. Also, apparently the frame rate is dipping whilst I'm recording. It doesn't normally do that when I'm playing. Uh, it normally runs at a smooth 60-ish. I'm not, you know, an amazing graphics card. I'm running a 770, GTX 770. It's quite old. Runs fairly well. I'm going to blame the frame rate dips on the recording. I do apologize. It's the recording setup I've got. I can't really change it. Totally could have made that corner if I didn't suck. And I always forget that corner exists. One of these days I'll stop sucking. Maybe shouldn't have boosted right there, it's alright. You can use the energy, I should mention. Uh, you can use the energy to do a regular boost by just burning some energy instead of doing, using my ability and burning all of it. 
but the ability is a, uh, a very substantial boost. Now if I was min-maxing, I'd probably use some of the, the normal energy for a regular boost between... Ooh, jeez. I don't know what happened there. Between, um... My big boosts, but you know, it's alright. I'm not a professional red out player quite yet. And this, uh, the last half of this, this Alaska track, the Alaska event, is actually very difficult. I imagine the later volcano levels are very difficult as well. To play this game well, uh, is very taxing. There's a lot of up and down and different pitches you're going to have to manage while strafing around corners, etc, etc. So do bear that in mind. This is a, a tricksy racing game. I have done these tracks before. Bear that in mind when you see this. And if, apologies if you can... Oh god, I forgot that part of the tracking system. Uh, apologies if you can see the uh, Discord messages popping up. Bear in mind, this is only the second region that you actually uh, unlock when going through the campaign. This is the second area that you unlock. The first one is the desert place. It's actually relatively simple. And then you get to here and you get these kinds of tracks going off. And then I can't imagine Volcano, like I mentioned earlier, but my brain is too busy doing things based on my thumbs. Take that as you will. Now I am way ahead of the AI. I have noticed that at the start of the game I found the AI very difficult to beat, but uh, as I've started playing more, it seems like the AI has some some something going on. I don't know, but sometimes they are very easy to deal with. And then other times, like the first time I did this track actually, uh, the first place AI was 15 seconds ahead of me, and I'm not doing, you know, a tremendous amount better than I was last time I did this track, so. I don't know what's going on with the AI. Uh, for the most part, they seem competent. But sometimes they just seem a bit out of whack, and I'm not sure. Maybe it's just this particular vehicle is really good, I'm not sure. I keep forgetting that exists, that little hump there. Now optimally you don't want to have any blackouts or redouts or any scraping on the track or anything like that. But if you can manage to do that consistently, by god you're a much better player than I am. Because it's... And this is only class 2, bear in mind, there is a class 4 that goes faster. So you're going to be going around a lot of these corners, you know, at quite a bit, quite a bit faster than I'm going around them at the later stages of gameplay. It does reuse tracks, obviously there's different modes and it's, it's only five, oh god I forgot about that again, there's only five tracks per region, so. They will, you will play each track with each class and probably in each mode as well as you make your way through the campaign. I should not have boosted there, if you're curious. The vehicles are a little floaty. Uh, I don't know if I ever mentioned that, but they are a little floaty. When they said they based it on quadrocopters, they're not wrong. If you've ever flown a quadrocopter and you felt sort of how it's gone around, uh, like made a, made a turn or something like that, you you know it's a little floaty going through tur corners, turns, whatever. And you can definitely feel that. Whoa, I almost killed myself, eh? That particular part of the track, that's revolving is the track we're on right now in Alaska, uh, which I couldn't pick manually earlier, but that part of the track is very tricky because you go from two entirely different uh, G's. You go, you go positive G's, negative G's, and then I think you go straight back to positive G's. And there's like a jump in the middle of there, and then you go to negative G's again, and it's very rapid. So you gotta be careful with that kind of stuff, but there you go. 
I said I was going to be quiet because I needed to focus, but apparently not because the AI was nowhere near me. But either way, you can redo events that you've already done for additional money or experience or whatever. I'm curious how far second place was, so we're going to sit here and wait a little bit. But that's Red Out. Red Out's, uh, in my opinion, quite fun. If you like these kinds of racing games, you'll very much enjoy Red Out. Um, and it does have the VR, optional VR experience if you have the equipment to do that, so... That could be nice. I don't know what it looks like. I haven't looked into that, but... You know, if it interests you, there's probably a video demonstrating it somewhere out there or something like that. But there you go. It was 44 seconds ahead of second place, apparently. I'm not even going to wait for the rest of them, because that'll take forever, but... Uh, you also, I forgot to mention, you also get these contracts periodically, so it just, this one just says race with this ship, obtain a medal, those are the easiest ones. And you can check your contract by checking the profile up here and hitting that button. But here's my stats. Highest speed, 856. Apparently I've gone 13 miles supersonic. Didn't even know I was supersonic. The music, as far as I'm aware, changes, uh, with your speed. So the faster you go, the more intense the music gets. Uh, I imagine once you hit supersonic, it gets to the highest intensity it will have. But yeah, there you go. There's 20 tracks, a billion events, lots of power-ups that you can upgrade. I forgot to mention, you can't upgrade your ships. There's only four upgrades, you can't customize them. They all do a set amount. You can also upgrade your power-ups. You can see I can upgrade my turbo boost if I wanted to, which I may as well. Upgrade my magnetic stabilizer, etc, etc. And uh, that's it. So there you go. I quite like Red Out. If you like these kinds of games, you'll probably like Red Out too. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.